Cougar country. Frontier coming in tonight's ball game with a 6-2 record, the same as Woodfield. Their only loss is coming at the hands of a top-ranked Bellsville team on September 25th. I believe that score was 28 to 12, something like no, that was the only that was the only uh, shutout, maybe 20 to nothing. 21-0. 21-0. And they they again lost two weeks ago against Caldwell. And uh, so they are a top-ranked team and they're a good ball team. Coming in tonight's ball game, they're coached by Vince Elder. He's in his fourth year with a 14 and 16 record overall coming in tonight. Last year they were two and eight overall, but he has nine returning letter winners, and they they appear to be very strong so far. They have had some pretty decent ball games. Lance, I want to welcome you. I think we're in for an exciting ball game. You know, I picked up one stat and I, I haven't got it verified, but. Um, in the 21 year history, I don't believe the, the Cougars have ever beat the Redskins. You know, that's pretty amazing. Right, that's, um, that's something that they use every year as a uh, motivational tool for their kids. And, um, you know, eventually that may that, happen. That may happen. And uh, I know this year Coach Tricosta sort of used that as a motion, motivational uh, tool with our boys. Um, we do have to get fired up. When, yes. when our team is fired up, they play a lot better ball than you know, than when they come out flat. I mean, that's the same with any team, but especially with these guys. Need to come out early, get on top. Um, it, it is especially important tonight. You know, I, I think, right. you, you know, you look at the uh, the rankings, you know, we're, we're ranked 10th in the um, AP poll in uh, Division 5, Region 19. They're ranked 8th. You know, neither one of us are ranked in the state now. We fell out after last week lost to Barnesville. But, you know, there's a lot riding on the game for both teams. Right. We, we have an outside shot. I mean, a lot of things are going to have to happen, but we have an outside shot at a playoff spot. We have a real good shot, though, at an OVAC championship. Uh, we went out and we share, at least share, the PVC championship. Um, so, you know, there is a lot riding on the game tonight for us as well. An OVAC championship is a pretty coveted uh, yes, it uh, is. An award. And uh, it's well within sights. We have two teams ahead of us, uh, or two games ahead of us, where a lot of points towards that championship can be uh, made up. So yeah. we need to come out smoking. Yes, and it's going to be a big ball game. You know, the, the rain had kind of held off, and right before game time, you know, it started raining and drizzling. That will have some effect on the ball game. Yeah, Perry said that's his forecast for tonight. We don't have the best shot here. We're kind of in a, a real nice booth, but we have some dead spots on the corners. But we're going to bring you high school football. And our Rimple is ready to kick the ball away. Back deep, Tim Burroughs will get the ball right on the goal line. He's up to the 15-20. He's around the outside, going on the 25. And he's taken down, looks like just short of the 20-yard line. Several people that we can look for tonight uh, offensively for the Cougars. Their quarterback is a good one, Chris Hurst, number 11, 6'3", 150 pounds. You know, he's, he's shown that he can run the option, he can throw the ball. You know, their tailback, Tim Burroughs, who just had the ball, number three, he is their most used back last year, gaining over 550 yards in 1991. They are a quality ball team, and they can play. Little razzle-dazzle as the Cougars trying to bring up short. The ball was loose, I believe. They called it incomplete. Called it. Uh, I'll tell you what, that's the exact same play that Colwell ran against us the, um, earlier in yes. the season. And uh, Woodsfield did a real nice job of staying with, you know, keeping their heads and playing that right. Smelling that out. Tell you what, that was that was real close to being an interception uh, in the grass, grounding several different things could have been called for a big loss there. So uh, Frontier fortunate on first down. Another guy to watch, number 24, coming right out to the screen here, Cam West. Cam is a senior. He's 5'10", 150 pounds, but he can outright fly. Ball is given straight up the middle. Burroughs. Burroughs picks up, looks like three yards. Oh, 
As Coach Chacosta said on the show last night, they like to run a lot of the slot eye, uh, look for a lot of possible uh, reverses or, or different types of trick plays out of the slot man. Um, I believe that's number 10 that will be lining up in the slot most of the time. Yes, number 10, Brad Berga. Berger's six foot, 180 pound. He's only a junior. But we have a delay of game, I believe, against the Cougars. I think they call it an illegal procedure. procedure. Somebody procedure must call. have come up and, and put their hand down and brought it up, which uh, once an interior lineman's hands down, it's uh, that's it. He has to leave it down. Jamie Vusick coming out and Cam West reporting back in. Both of these boys reported to be, have some good speed, Vusick and West. To this side come Berger and Cam West wide out on this side. Berger in motion. First taking the snap. He had drop. And he falls. I believe he just tripped as he came yeah, back. Yeah, it uh, looks like it's a little bit... Uh, Maybe a little slick. Might be know. a little bit slick. I noticed on the kickoff a few of our guys, when they came down and started trying to plant their feet, they were going down. So that hopefully will favor the Redskins as we've uh, most of the year run more of a, a power-type football. Berga will kick this away back, back deep. Chris Lynn and Russell. Berga standing on the five-yard line. And it's a short kick. It'll drop and take a Woodsfield bounce. <laughs> 31 yard line. What a, I tell you what, that just a um, big break for Woodsfield to ball hit. I should uh, say. Obviously, a little bit soft out there. Well, we'll take those all evening. And as Coach Sacosta would say, you know, it's almost like the uh, tango football one, <laughs> one, two, three punt. So we'll see what the Redskins can do here. Nine minutes and 35 seconds. First and 10, ball laying on the 31-yard line. Russell looking. He has Nelson. Oh, and Nelson right at the goal line. Just couldn't come up with a handle. Larry had a step on him, and uh, the ball just just, uh, just out of the reach of his fingertips. Just uh, slightly, yes. He was open, and uh, Rick threw a nice pass out. To, uh, you know, it takes a lot of... Um, a lot of coordination to get that pass exactly down. You, you notice or you see so many of them completed and you think it's easy, but that's a tough play to complete. Nelson wide to this side. A wishbone formation. Russell will take the snap. Gives the ball a tailback. Dustin Robinson breaks it back across. He's got some room. He's down to the 10. And he's brought down. Looks like at the 13-yard line. A lot of nice ball fakes in there and a, a real nice job by the left side of the offensive line. Uh, you know, we, we talk all year about these freshmen and what a job they're doing carrying the ball and, and hearts and this and that. Uh, they've opened, these linemen have opened up some holes that I think Perry could have run through. So, <laughs> That's so saying a lot. Give them a little I... bit of credit. <laughs> Again, the wishbone this time was a quick hitter. Short gain up the middle. It looks like they picked up possibly two yards. Shoemaker picking up two. I think we even uh, fooled the referees a little bit <laughs> in Frontiers. Well, they, uh, they did a nice job. They tackled everybody that they thought had the ball, which amounted to about everybody in the backfield. So Rick Russell showing a little magic here. Russell back, drops it off. Nelson has it right at the first down marker and out of bounds. Down and out. He's going to be short, possibly two yards. Going to mark it third and two with just over eight minutes as we're down, knocking on the door for the first score. That's quite a cushion on a on a goal line situation here. Woodsfield with the ball at about the uh, ten yard line, and they're giving us a uh, giving us an eight a yard cushion room, on yes. the out. Right, take so, that every time. Right. Gives the ball to Shoemaker. Shoemaker straight ahead for a couple. He'll be close to the first down. 
And it is a first down. So we'll have first and goal. Can't see the exact marking there, but it looks like it's within the five yard line. First and goal. Seven minutes and 30 seconds remaining in the first quarter. Barry Nelson out wide to this side. Wishbone formation, Russell. Take the snap, gives it to Dustin Robinson. Dustin's in for the score. Dustin Robinson again takes it in at 7-19. And we have a six to nothing score. That was a nice job that time, faking the shoemaker on the quick hit, giving it to Dustin. And Dustin walked in for the first score. Dalrymple on the punt. Kicks up. And it's good. So at 7-19, we have our first score on a rainy evening along the Ohio River. And we'll be right back to see what Frontier can do. You stay with us. These coal jobs are the lifeblood of our area, and no one is fighting harder to save them than State Senator Bob Ney. After the federal government passed the Clean Air Act, which would have literally wiped out every coal mine job in the state of Ohio, I authored Senate Bill 143, and it told the coal miners of Ohio we weren't going to turn our backs on them. It has set up the scrubber process and allowed us to continue to try to keep our coal jobs very much alive in Ohio. Let's keep State Senator Bob Ney fighting to save coal jobs. Are you driving on tires with a warranty that only seems to protect you against road hazards? What you need are Atlas Tires from Demchex BP with the exclusive road hazard warranty. This warranty protects your tires while driving from damage caused by chuck holes, glass, or metal objects in the road. If your Atlas Tire is ever damaged, we'll fix it or replace it on a prorated basis over the life of the tire. In other words, we charge you only for the actual tread wear. Repairable punctures are naturally excluded. So see Demchex BP for Atlas Tires with a warranty that has real teeth in it, one that guarantees full protection. Protection. So after the score, Dyrimple will kick this away. Back deep, Jason Amos and Tim Burroughs. Burroughs with the ball on the seven yard line, straight up the middle. He's got some room, dives through a couple tacklers, and he's brought down the 35 yard line. Burrow's doing a good job straight up the middle. <laughs> Weber, I believe, on the stop. Pretty nice job of kicking right there. Chris kicked the ball to the eight-yard line. Uh, yeah, straight up the middle return. I, I think we're going to need to to get a little better coverage as the night goes on on our kickoff. Uh, yeah, that's just a little bit too much as far as a return for a kick that nice. Ball on the 36-yard line. Quick handoff up the middle. Amos, I believe, the ball carrier, number 20. And a pickup of three. Justin Amos is a sophomore. Coming out of the ball game, Brad Berger. Cam West wide out to the far side. And a power eye formation. Handoff goes to Burroughs. He stopped right at the line and pulled back. And I don't believe he picked up anything. Another loud crowd from Woodsfield here tonight. And I tell you what, the, the kids keep hitting like they did right there, and it'll keep the crowd in the game over on the other side. So. It's nice to hear. Yes, it is. Well, we've got the Super Bowl coming up next week, the Bellsville game. Now, Bellsville has a, you know, none of them are easy, but they got Buckeye Trail this evening. You know, that's one they should, you know, if they do things halfway decent, should win. And, of course, they'll come in the next week ready for Woodsfield. First with the ball, and it's complete across the middle. <laughs> Right, for a 
decent coverage there. We had several guys in the area, and, and not a bad pass rush. I, I guess you just uh, have to credit the, the kids from Frontier on you know, perfect execution right there. They did a nice job. I never did see the number of the kid who caught the ball, but he paid for it once he caught it. You know, he was hit. He was hit hard. Brad Burgo, the catch. Burgo is the slot to the right. West. West with the ball on the far side, and he picks up two yards. We're going to get a hold here on the uh, slot man, come out and um, grab Chad Weber and pull him down. So this one's going to get back about 10 yards, I believe, from the spot of the penalty. And I almost thought that ball bounced before it got there, but <laughs> we'll, guess we'll I run was, that back. On the <laughs> guess I was wrong. They're calling a clip, which uh, oh, we're right? five yards better off there, yes. so we'll take it. So this will be a big penalty. Brad Burger coming back into the ball game. Nice evening for football. Rainy evening. They'll mark this off, and it'll put the Cougars back on the clipping call. Looks like we're back to the 47-yard line. 43. 43-yard line. Two, one. <laughs> Two, one. <laughs> They're it's a hard to, to catch the. Uh, I can't see the the yard lines at all. I can see the 40 over here. Another nice thing about whom? That's right. Verde in motion. Hurst. Quick handoff up the middle. Burroughs picks up possible three or four yards straight up the middle, up to the 45 yard line. His temper is flaring already. Stopped there by West. Trevor Taylor, Taylor coming into the ball game, number 89, replacing Berger. Taylor and West to this side. It's second and 12. First, throws it to Cam West here in front of us, right at the 50 yard line. Nice coverage again by the Redskins secondary. Five yards, uh, you know, on, on second and 20 or second and 19, we'll give up the five yards. Uh, you know, same thing here. They, they want to throw the five yard out. As long as nothing deep, we'll, you know, we'll, we we'll sacrifice that. and give that up. Third and, well, it was 13. Must not have been second and 12 a little bit ago. Third and 13, Cam West again. Far out to the right side. First with a power backfield and motion. So again, they're going to take a penalty against the Cougars. Back them up another five. Ball will be just short of the 45-yard line. We're going to be third and 18 with three minutes. Just over three minutes left in the first quarter. That's the third penalty on Frontier here in their second offensive possession. And I tell you what, the three penalties that are hurting them, uh, you know, they can't afford to keep putting themselves back in the hole like this. Hurst fakes. He's got pressure, and he's going to be down. With Dalrymple breaking through, and finally taking down by Shane Dunn. Hurst dropped back. Took a step up, looked like he was going to come free, and he was down. So it'll be fourth down. Fourth and 22. And Burgerwald have to kick it away. Russell and Lynn be standing back on the 25-yard line. Burger's kick. Bounces, and it's going to go to the 28-yard line, I believe. So we're going to have first and 10 on the 28-yard line. And Lance will have to talk this one because I can't even see it from here. <laughs> <laughs> that was sort of the same type of uh, pun as before. He just happened to get a, a roll the other direction this time. Not a lot you can tell your kids to do on that. You can hardly tell them to come up 15 yards for the pun. So... Yeah, break for Frontier. 
slot to the left. Russell handoff. Shoemaker. Shoemaker's got some room. And he's across the first down line. Down to the 40-yard line on a nice run. Luke doing a nice job breaking to the outside, getting some room, and he picks up 10 plus yards for a first down. First and 10, one minute and 55 seconds remaining in the first quarter. Larry Nelson to this side. Power backfield in the wishbone. Gives it to the tailback, and he stopped right at the line. Number 66, Shane Smitley on the stop. Also, Jason Edgar in on the stop. Edgar, one of their bigger boys, 6'4", 215 pounds, a junior, a tight end. Does a good job on the line defensively. Nelson to this side. He's guarded there by Cam West. Rick drops this time, looking. Drops it off underneath. Chris Lynn with the ball. And Lynn's down to the 35-yard line, I believe. Well, that was just a beautifully executed play. They had single coverage on the, uh, on the wide out here. Larry Nelson, as you said. Uh, Chris Lynn simply ran a little flat pattern. Did a nice job of holding up at the line. Uh, faking like he's going to block or seal off block and just release and uh, that was wide open. Larry ran his man off. 20 was plus a, yard pickup. A beautiful executed play. 44 seconds. Chad Weber a slot to this side. Hand off goes to Luke Shoemaker. Shoemaker across the middle. He cuts it back and he's good yardage straight up the middle. 25 yard line I believe. Shoemaker doing a good job cutting it back to the middle. Straight Almost draw play it. that time. Uh, something a little different than we've seen here the last few weeks. Uh, don't really remember seeing a draw play in the last couple weeks. I'm not sure I can either. Beautiful hole again on the left side. Uh, running Done behind nice look like Jeremy Kramer and uh, Chad West over there. First and 10, 14 seconds. Handoff goes to Lynn. Lynn's around the outside. He's got some speed, and he heads for the corner, and he'll step in as Chris Lynn with four seconds on the clock. Beautiful move. There was nothing up that left side, and he broke it to the outside, and it was a race for the end zone. And Lynn trots in untouched with four seconds. And Dalrymple will attempt to kick. 13 to nothing so far as Lumpy will see if he can make it 14 to zip. It's down. And it's through. So there's only four seconds left here in this quarter, Lance. That's what we were talking about, you know, coming down here and, and establishing some things. Well, that's exactly it. I'll tell you, I, I spent all week trying to to think to myself, how were these guys going to come out and play tonight? I, these guys, I mean Woodsfield, because uh, I had assumed Frontier would come out sky high. Well, sure. Uh, they have Woodsfield, to. You know, I still couldn't really tell, even after the opening kickoff, but uh, I'll tell you what, this is, uh, these guys, <laughs> they just seem to take a business-like approach at it. Get out there, get the job done. Yeah. Uh, heck with all the hoopla, we want to play ball. And, uh, there's not that big emotional stuff, you know. They just kind of go out and get the job done. Oh, really? And, but this and is an impressive way to get started because Frontier is a quality program. Tell you what, they're six and two, and as I said, a lot of points to be picked up here. Uh, Frontier, it surprised me, but that they appear to be pretty flat right now. And uh, we punch another one on the board, or, or not even punch another one in, but but have another big defensive stop. Uh, yeah. This series, this you know, key series again, and we get See, this we last go again. Time, but uh, they were they were kind of. They were moving the ball slightly, but they kind of shot themselves in the foot with penalties. You exactly. know, they had a 15-yarder, and, you know, that, that hurts you. Dyrimple, the ball comes, and it bounces loose. Justin Amos has the ball go through his hands. And you, you talk to some fans tomorrow from <laughs> from this area, and they'll probably tell you that, uh, 
Yeah, the referees killed him. Uh, <laughs> but there's been there's only been three calls. Uh, only uh, that would be a lot for four quarters, twelve penalties. But uh, there, there's been three calls, and all three of them are yeah. penalties that really hurt him. That they were three obvious penalties. Guys moving. Uh, yeah, you had some yeah, blatant things happen. Exactly. It was yeah. uh, it was a clear call. It wasn't something a, a judgment call or a shaky call. So. Um, but that's so going to end the first quarter, you know, and, and it has been kind of a penalty ridden for the Frontier Cougars. We're going to take a break, and we come back, we'll have the second quarter action with Frontier taking over. Homemade apple dumplings will tempt every palate at Katie's Dining Room. Treat your entire family to marinated ribeyes, chicken breast, and pork chops. Banquet and meeting rooms are available. Call 472-0958 today to schedule your Christmas party or business meeting. Owners Susan and Tony Yannick and Martha and Fred Ackerman invite you to stop in for Sunday afternoon and Monday night football. And every Friday and Saturday night, a DJ plays your favorite music. Stop at Katie's today for a delicious dinner, but don't forget to leave room for the mouth-watering homemade apple dumplings. Hi, my name is Fred Sirian, and I'm a candidate for Monroe County Sheriff. It seems that the bond of trust between you, the citizen, and law enforcement is broken down. Together we need to rebuild and constantly reinforce that bond. My law enforcement training and education is one of the most extensive in our area. I intend to institute continual in-service training to all Monroe County officers, to initiate administrative changes, creating a standard operating procedure, and to initiate an open door policy for the public and to begin monthly meetings. Feel free to call me at 567-3105. We're back for second quarter action. We have a 14 and nothing score in favor of the Redskins. And the Cougars have the possession of the ball on the 24-yard line. Cam West to this side. Hurst gives the ball to, looks like Justin Amos. Amos picks up five yards. Up to the 30-yard line, stopped by Shoemaker. It's second and five. Second and five. There's Amos made a dive play for a five-yard pickup. Berger in motion to this side. Quick handoff straight up the middle and nothing there. Amos uh, again on the carry, I believe, as he picks up short yardage, possibly two yards. Or to make it third and three. Got a big play coming up here for Frontier. Uh, you know, if they want to establish or get back in this ball game, they're going to need to pick up a first down yeah. right here. Uh, I don't think they can afford to get down 21 nothing. but, uh, you know, it is early. First down here, get a little bit of momentum back for them. Berger to the far side, and Busick this side, I'm sorry, Cam West. First in a lot of trouble, he turns, the ball is tipped up in the air. And I believe Frontier came down. No, they call it incomplete. It popped out. It was tipped in the air. Tim Burroughs went up, came down with it, but lost the ball or didn't have possession. Incomplete pass. And we have a flag. Somebody saw, obviously said, said something, something to the official. Uh, uh, that's that's hurting yourselves, I'll tell you. I would have been shocked if it would have been someone from Woodsfield because uh, yeah, <laughs> I think if, if one of the boys in the red and white out here do that, they know where they're going to be going and they know what's going to happen. So I don't think we need to worry about that. And that's uh, well, this yeah, that's again. nice. It, it's nice to go out to the ball game and know that you know, your kids are conducting themselves in the way our boys do most of the time. Yeah, and see, this is another one of those situations. This is a penalty that they just can't can't afford. Going to give Woodsfield the ball in good defensive or offensive position. We got Lynn and Rick Russell standing right here on the 50-yard line. And with any kind of luck, we're going to have great field position again for this possession. 10 minutes and 29 seconds. Berger standing back almost on the goal line. Kick coming down right at the 50 yard line. It'll take a frontier bounce. 
the 39 yard line. Fans yelling they thought it hit somebody. I, I couldn't see, but they thought it might have hit one of the Woodsfield boys as it, it came down. It did come down awful close. So. It did, but I didn't see the ball change you know, direction any, so I don't know. Tell you what, that was a beautiful kick by the boy from Frontier. Oh, yeah, after was. the first two punts, uh, you, know, you sort of wonder, why, why are our kids still standing clear back at here after the way this kid's kicking, and he turns around and lets one go like that. It's a real nice kick. Yeah, it's going to put us somewhat back in a hole, you know, from where we thought we'd be. Well, with time out on the field, we'll take a short break, and we'll come right back. I'm Gary Reisler, Democratic candidate for Monroe County Commissioner. I am a lifelong resident, having diligently served the past 11 years in official capacity for Monroe Countyans. I'm currently in my 10th year as Litter Prevention Program Manager. I have secured over $600,000 in grants funds. My platform consists of economic development, recreation and tourism, and financial assistance types grants programs. I promise to work aggressively for all areas of Monroe County. Your vote of confidence on November third would be deeply appreciated. Redskins will have the ball first and ten after a beautiful punt by Berger. Puts us down to the 38-yard line. First and ten. Ten minutes and 12 seconds. Slot to the side. You can hear the crowd really getting into this. They wanted the Cougars to have the ball back. And there's a flag. Now, they're going to they're call one of our linemen for moving. Uh, it, it's a different situation because, for one, I'd said earlier when Frontier had moved their hand, it was an interior lineman. That was our tight end that uh, pulled his hand up. He's allowed to pick his hand up and move on out, you know, to a split position or whatever. So, you know, they, they obviously thought he made a move uh, to uh, advance. You can hear the noise, a lot of fan reaction. Handoff goes to Luke Shoemaker, Luke back up to the 45, 46 yard line, where he's upset. 89, Vusek on the stop. About a six yard pickup, so, you yeah, know, we'll take that. It sounded, <laughs> if you're listening <laughs> to the crowd noise, you thought he got there in for a six yard loss, but, uh, Six yards on first down. We're back into second nine, so we're all right. It is second and nine. Nelson will be wide to the right, and the official is going to call an official timeout. talking about here right? we, we got a little bit of, of a, they got a little bit of a break here the uh, official stopped the clock for some reason or other frontier only had 10 guys on the field uh, no timeout charged I, I don't understand I don't really. know what I don't know what's going on there you, you listen to the crowd on Woodsfield and I think they see the same thing I did they stopped the clock and allowed them to get an 11th man on the field Larry Nelson ride to the right and the wishbone formation, nine minutes and 37 seconds. 14 to nothing. Nice drive of Dustin Robinson. Dustin breaks it back across, and he's got the first down. Now that's just on pure effort. I'll tell you what, beautiful piece of running there. Yeah, uh, beautiful. Made a couple freshman. nice cuts. Uh, again, a, a nice hole on the left side here to get him, you know, get him across the line of scrimmage. Once you get into their defensive backfield, you know, it's one on one, and uh, it's where the best man wins. And, and yeah, we've been doing a lot of that. And Dustin, <laughs> it's hard to believe, no bigger than he is, like a button. Before he gets the job done. So we got a first down, first and ten, nine minutes and fifteen seconds. Larry Nelson wide to the right, quick hitter. There's the Shoemaker. Shoemaker picks up three across the 45-yard line. He gave him four yards, second and six. Second down and six. The 45-yard line. It's for basically going at him right between the tackles and moving the ball, and that's there. I like to see that kind of football. Russell drops. Hits Larry right at the 45. 
and he broke down. He's still on his feet and possibly picks up a couple. Rusick won the stop, aided by several other Frontier players. Real nice second effort by Larry there, got knocked back to probably where he would have lost yards and made an effort and got a yard gain out of it. It'll be third and five. Not quite as big a cushion on that side that time. They got to the ball a little bit faster. Nelson to this side. He's got it there by number 10, Brad Berger. And I see the ball loose. And the auction player. Shane Smitley on the stop. We tried to run an option to the right side that time. And uh, Frontier did a nice job of getting getting up on the quarterback and putting some pressure. And uh, Rick made the decision to, you know, to pitch the ball. Maybe he shouldn't have. Uh, you, you can't second guess it. It's done. Yeah. Defense yeah. needs to come in and do the job. There's a lot of confusion on that side with the <laughs> side of the field. But it is their ball with seven minutes and 32 seconds. It is a 14 to nothing ball game in favor of the Redskins. But they'll have the ball here on the 47 yard line. Cam West to this side. Hurst, Hurst with a quick hitter. And Barrow. Tim Burroughs picks up, looks like six yards. Good inside running, called it on the stop. It'll be 47 yard line, second and four. Going through the uh, the roster there earlier when you were looking at some of the key players for Frontiers, you noticed they have some decent size in their backfield. Um, Starting to put that to use, and as I'd said earlier, a lot of teams make the mistake of not going with what works enough. Again, Barrows, Barrows with a hole. And Tim Barrows showing a burst of speed straight up the middle. I believe if he hadn't run into his own player, he might have been gone. A nice piece of running as he picks up first down. I believe it's on the 37 yard line. Hard to see the line markers. Berga and Cam West to this side. First, the left handed quarterback again to Burroughs. And Burroughs with hard running straight up the middle. Picks up another three, four yards. As the frontier are moving. Berger checks out. Jamie Vusick will come into the ball game. Vusick's 5'11", 150 pounds. He's a senior. Again, DeBarros, and he's he's caught from behind that time by West and Calder. Woodsfield has been getting pushed back, and, and a lot of holes opened up, and. Uh, I don't know if, if we were bringing a linebacker in that situation or exactly what the call was, but uh, the penetration was there and turned into a one-yard loss. So, so obviously we need to, to start firing onto the ball if uh, they start showing some tendencies, pick up on them and go after it. Justin Amos and Brad Berger checking back into the ball game. Fire checked out. Ball is tossed back to Justin Amos. Amos, and he's tripped up. Jeremy Kramer. Kramer was knocked down. Saw the ball carry coming and tripped him up. I'll tell you what, he made, made the <laughs> tackle from his back. A, a beautiful play. Uh, last week we said Jeremy Kramer's name about 200 times. I'll tell you <laughs> what, for sophomores, another young kid playing some good he's ball. He's doing a great job, isn't he? He, uh, he attributes that to the red meat that he eats up at Shookies every day. So... Uh, <laughs> I don't know if there's anything to that, but if, if there is, I have a feeling there would be a lot of kids following him up there. Cam West to this side. Berger on the opposite side. Barrows and Justin Amos. Amos is stopped right at the line. It's Shoemaker. 
Kramer, both on the stop. Luke did a nice job that time, busting through. So, nothing quiet to crowd. That's right. <laughs> More than something like that. I can hear fail. you now, Dale. So. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> it will be our ball, first and ten on a beautiful play. They had the momentum going. There's no doubt about that. You know, they've made some beautiful plays. Thing is, I, I just said, if you get something going, stay with it. Yeah. Uh, they run the ball up the middle a couple times again right after I said that, and we stopped them. So nice job of the defense. And off to Shoemaker. Shoemaker over this side. <laughs> Brian Cutright on the stomp. And Barrows. Tim Burrows fired up for this one. Maybe a little too much so. <laughs> Sometimes that can be a big luck down. You get fired up so high and then, you know. Yeah, I think you mentioned sustain. earlier about him having relatives in the Woodsfield area. Yeah. So, yeah, another reason for them to be fired up uh, like they needed any others to begin with. Fake hand off back to Weber. Weber stopped again at the line. Tim Burrows again, I believe, on the stop. That was just a nice play by Burrows, or Burrows there. There was a lot of a lot of room had Chad got by him, so Burrows made a nice nice one-on-one -on -one tackle there. Third and five, two minutes and 40 seconds remaining in the half. Nelson to this side. Chris Lynn slot to this side. Luke Shoemaker and Weber. Russell drops. He's got pressure. He's flushed out of the pocket. A nice, nice block. He's up to the 50-yard line and out of bounds. Well, I'll tell you what, Chris Lynn, that was the football player right there. Chris was wide open in the flat. Uh, Rick didn't see him, didn't really get a chance to get the ball to him, and instead of standing there and, and dropping his arms and, and dropping his head, he came back and picked up the key block, uh, block that got to first down for us. That was a beautiful block. So we're up just short of the 50-yard line, 49-yard line, first and 10, 2 minutes and 25 seconds. Larry Nelson, wide out to the right. Ball handed off to Dustin Robinson. Dustin trying to break it around the outside. Can't get by Barrows as Barrows stops him for a pickup of two. Tim Barrows doing a fabulous job. He's in every play. He's everywhere. He, he's also the kid that Chris Lynn flattened over there. So yeah. Didn't slow him down much. He's right back in it on the next play right after. Coming to this side again, Chris Lynn breaks it to the outside and takes on a big hit by number 10, Brad Burga. We brought yep. it straight back to this side, Lance. <laughs> that was some play. I don't know that he really got hit so hard as, as when he tried his spin move. He just happened to spin right into the guy, but uh, yeah, he, he didn't slow down. He <laughs> ran off the field pretty good shape. So. Big play coming up here. Third and two. One minute and five seconds. Hand off. Robinson. And I believe it's going to be short. They're signaling about fourth, fourth and one. And I, I would look for Woodsfield to go with. Go, go for it. Here. 50 seconds remaining. Fourth and one. 45 seconds. You, you punt, you take a chance of uh, you punt, you take a chance of them maybe blocking it or play. returning it. Uh, Woodsfield went with the timeout. Uh, maybe they should have taken a little more time off the clock, but uh, then you, know, you always risk standing there and your judgment being different than the referees. And uh, yeah. five yards would hurt us right here. Yeah, this is a big play. It will be fourth and one. 
But now back to Frontier. You know, Frontier has done some things, but it seems like they just can't consistently haven't been able. Uh, Barrows came down, had some beautiful runs up the middle, picked up big yardage. They were in great shape and just couldn't convert on that fourth down play, which that was a big one. If they would have got that, they're back in. You know, we're at 14 to nothing. If they had got that score, uh, you know, 14-7, it's a whole new ball game. Exactly. I I have to agree with you. They they were moving the ball great. We've done a nice job of eating up a lot of clock here. I think Frontiers had the ball three times in the first half. Yeah. Uh, yes. That's, that's uh, great football when you can control the clock the way Woodsfield's done so far. We're able to keep, you know, we need to eat 40 more seconds up here. I look for us if we can pick the first down up here to uh, maybe go for the score on two or three plays. So we're fourth and one. Fourth and one. Slot to this side. Russell. And Russell straight over and he's. He's picked up the first down, I believe. The surge of the line. It's going to depend where they put the spot. Uh, Rick was clear up to the line, I thought. He didn't I thought get he was, but he spot. didn't get <laughs> so We'll put money on this one, Lance. I'm not sure. I, I say he's got it. Half of the ball. I don't think he does. <laughs> I'm going to say about, about an inch. I don't think he does either. Uh oh, there's two against one here. We'll see. It may not be here. Uh oh. Look at him stretching it. <laughs> Boy, he did stretch it over, didn't he? Oh. That's Man. one inch off. Yeah, you're one inch off. It was an inch, but wrong way. Boy, I tell you what, I never saw anybody stretch the chains as hard as they did. <laughs> I tell you what, that's a. It must have been a link cot or something. I wonder where those guys are from. <laughs> but it was a first down. <laughs> they probably work at Ormet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even going to touch this. <laughs> well, you can well, be in talk trouble. To anybody from Woodsfield that works there, and there's quite a feud between the guys from the Mount oh, yes. area and the guys from uh, Woodsfield area. So. Ricky drops. Oh, and he's going deep. The ball is up in the air, and it's caught down. Still on his feet, <laughs> taken out of bounds at the 47-yard line. I'll say somebody cleaned him up over there. I'll tell you, what a hit. Rick Russell took a hit as he let that ball go also. There's still 14 seconds remaining in this first half. We do have an injured ball player. And that melee at the 45-yard line, one of the Cougars are down. Rick Russell threw the ball up and Larry Nelson and I'm not sure I didn't see the number of the coverage man I don't know whether it was Busick or not acted like he hurt his knee the way he was on the ground there on his side well we had several chances on back to get the man and you know there was some good blocking on down. Finally did get him out of bounds. They placed the ball on the 40, 47, 48 yard line where Frontier has 14 seconds to do something here as they're still tending to the uh, injured Cougar ball player. Now let's look at another game this evening of great interest to us, you know, with the uh, with Bellsville. Bellsville's got Buckeye Trail tonight. You know, Bellsville's ranked pretty high. And I mean, coming in the next week for the Redskins, you know, our final game, that's a tremendous, tremendous ball game. I'll tell you, Bellsville's got a lot riding on tonight's game, and I don't think anybody's looking past Buckeye Trail. They've uh, Buckeye Trail started out 0-6 and, and, and had two big two big wins as in as in high scoring wins they've got a a kid uh, I think his name's Snedeker uh, quarterbacks for him he's about six foot three and 195 pounds a real athlete and uh, he's carried them both games so far and I think that concerned a lot of people from Bellsville so, so yeah. I, I think they're they're, I think they're playing coming on the time. Pryor was the boy who was injured he's being helped off he had been injured previously I believe First, dropping, looking, and Dustin Robinson picks it off in the middle of the field. 
Dustin up the middle, breaks it to the outside, and he's back to the about the original line of scrimmage at the 46 yard line. The one second. Beautiful fingertip catch here by Dustin. Uh, Woodsfield had the men back in coverage. That's one of those situations where you know you throw it up one way and interception, you throw it up the opposite way and we have an interception. And so we're going to have another timeout. One second to go here in the half. <laughs> They're playing I didn't think domino games here. <laughs> Back, I'd be back surprised to the if they come out and kneel on it. Yes. <laughs> back to the Bellsville game, though, Lance. Um, I, I don't think there's any doubt coming in the next week that everybody in Monroe County is going to be up for that ball game. You know, uh, athletes, you know, spectators, <laughs> the entire community. And it's always a big game. You know, the last game of the year, and everybody gets ready for it. And it's at home, you know, at Bellsville this year. So I'm, I'm sure the odds makers have a lot of, a lot of things going on. <laughs> I'll tell you, uh, you know, Bellsville's going to have the home field advantage. Uh, home crowd advantage. Exactly. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure that, uh, you know, we're probably going to be the underdogs, uh, which which well we should be, I guess. Yeah. But, uh, but you see, know, we played some good ball, and if we come out, fired out the way we did against Barnesville and, and hit the way we have at times tonight, there's no reason we can't beat them. We, we can't allow the big play or we can't have the big letdown as far as yeah. defensively. But we, we come out, it's going to take a perfect game to beat them. Yeah. Uh, they're going to have to have a, a long, hard week of practice, uh, concentration, no goofing around. Uh, you know, there's, there's one week left, and uh, these seniors wouldn't be anything better to send them out with than a victory against Bellsville. So with one second, Coach Sacosta coming out with a trick play. Rick Russell faking He's on the opposite side, and he's going to be taken out of bounds down at the 36-yard line. So that's the way the, the half of this football game is going to end. We have a 14-0 advantage, but we have another half. So we'll be right back with the Woodsfield High School Marching Band. So stay with us. Hey, honey, I'm going to Jackson's to UPS this package and wire some money to Dan. Wait a minute, and I'll pick out some videos for this weekend. They really enlarged their video selection, and you can't beat the price. $1.99 each or three for $3.95. And I promised Tommy he could get a Nintendo tape. Mom, can I go and get a stuffed animal and some balloons for Jessica's birthday? All my friends shop there, and they have the best selection in town. Jackson's has something for everyone in your family, including school supplies, magazines, and books. Gift items, baskets, flowers, decorating accessories, greeting cards, gift wrap, and party supplies. And their newly remodeled store has toys, makeup, office supplies, Western Union and UPS delivery service, keys, copies, snacks, and for your convenience, they carry groceries and all your favorite soft drinks. And for the collector in your family, they even have baseball cards. Yes, at Jackson's, there's something for everyone. The F.W. Shoemaker Insurance Agency was established in 1903 and is located at 140 North Main Street, Woodsfield. They have three agents and three customer service representatives to give you the kind of service you deserve. Being an independent insurance agency means they represent different companies allowing them to compare for you. For all of your insurance needs, auto, home, life, bonds, business, or farms, contact F.W. Shoemaker Insurance Agency.
Wood Drugs is your locally owned, full-service discount price drugstore. Call 472-0417 for 24-hour emergency service. We'll be here for you. Delivery and mail-out services are available. We stock wheelchairs, hospital beds, canes, crutches, and other accessories. Retirees, ask Joe or Tom about our hassle-free Aetna prescription service. As a leader chain store, we bring you bargain prices on an assortment of products every month. Don't forget to bring us your photo finishing with 24-hour service. Bellwood Drugs, people you know and people you can trust with your health. Telephones, radios, fax machines, videos, sound equipment, adapters, and converters of all kinds. Scanners, smoke alarms, tape recorders, televisions, toys, games, VCRs, antennas, batteries, camcorders, and computers are just some of the things you'll find at Day Appliance and Radio Shack. With brand names including Quasar, GE, Realistic, and Memorex, they offer a wide variety of computers with IBM compatibility. For all of your electronic needs, see the vast inventory and stock at Day Appliance. They'll be happy to special order, too. See them today, Day Appliance and Radio Shack. We're ready for second half action. 14 to nothing is the score. The Cougars, the first half, have not been able to get anything going. Had a good drive in the second quarter and couldn't convert on a fourth down. Penalties hurting them in the first quarter. Berger will kick the ball away. Back deep, Robinson. Lynn and Weber. Whitsfield had possession of the ball most of the first half and have 14 points to prove it, a 14 to nothing ball game. And we're ready to get the second half under action. Kick goes to Weber on the far side. Deep, he's got a seam up the middle. A hit on by number 61, Brian Cutright. Brings it back close to the 30-yard line, 27-yard line. Cut right on the stop. We hit it right on the nose there, Dale, uh, about Woodsfield holding the ball most of the first half, and that's, uh, that's what you're going to need to do here the second half is, is grind it out. Uh, not a lot of success in the air. One nice pass to Chris Lynn and a couple outs to Larry. So yes. Big key's going to get be to get the ground game going here. And off to Shoemaker. Shoemaker picks up nice yardage. Coming around the side behind the block. Thirty-four yard line for that place it. And it'll be second and four. Burrows again on the stop. Second and four. Larry Nelson, wide out to the right, wishbone formation, toss back to Dustin Robinson, Robinson has some room, he's at the first down yard, he breaks it back, he's back to the middle of the field, and there's again, number three, Tim Burroughs, <laughs> amazing, he's all over the field. The kid's everywhere, he, he is. Yeah, he made the tackle after about a 10, 12 yard gain, but still, uh, yeah, we're, we're in the end zone a couple times if we weren't for number three. Yes, Dustin Robinson again showing great agility as he broke it to the sideline, came back to the middle, and Tim Burroughs coming from this side of the field stopping him. Give Jeremy Kramer a lot of credit on that play. He sealed off two men for Frontier allowing Dustin to get outside. Nice play around this side. Chris Lynn with the ball. I was totally fooled on that. I was looking to Shoemaker with the ball and the quick hitter. Yeah, he took a shot up there going up the middle. I think they thought he had the ball too. <laughs> well, he yeah, but, certainly fooled but, me. But that's how he has to go in there. He yes. has to go in uh, doubled over like he does, like he has the ball every time. Ball on the 46-yard line. Time the handoff goes to Shoemaker, and he picks up. Looks like he's close to the first down line. Might be just a little short. Very close. Third down and short. Third and one. Oliver on the stop that time on the 43-yard line. Shoemaker did a nice job getting up through the middle and just came slightly short 
Nine minutes, 25 seconds remaining in this third quarter. Slot to this side is Lynn. Shoemaker, and he's down to the 40-yard line, and he'll have the first down this time. Nice job by Luke here, just pushing the pile forward here. He got hit pretty close to the line of scrimmage here and turned out, you know, made it about a three-yard pickup. Enough for the first down. So again, we've controlled the ball here. Moving down the field, we're on the 40-yard line. Shane Dunn will come to this side. Larry Nelson is wide out to the right. Fake. Russell drops the ball to Shane Dunn. Shane's got it at the 30. He's down close to the 20-yard line where he's driven out of bounds. Nice executed play. Good Larry play. Nelson drew double coverage deep that time and left everything open. Uh, Woodsfield's run that play a couple times here and it's been pretty successful. Uh, like I said before, uh, that play seems to be a little bit new to the Redskin playbook this year and, and it's been successful just constantly all year long. So we're down on the 20 yard line in good position, first and 10, eight minutes and 45 seconds remaining in this third quarter. Dustin Robinson breaks it to this side. And right into the post. <laughs> I'm sure Perry couldn't see it on the film, and I couldn't see it here, so. I can see it. Let me tell you about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> tell us what happened there. Dustin did a nice job. He uh, he was hit about the seven or eight yard line and kept the low center of gravity that he has <laughs> going. Moved the ball down just, I think, right on the five yard line. So it's going to be first and goal. Let's hope this play goes to the right so everyone can see it. <laughs> this is what's fun about taping high school football games. And it does. Weber. And Weber just prances in off the right side. Had a beautiful job. Big hole. Another hole. I think Perry, could, he could have went through that I one carrying the camera. There. I think so. <laughs> If he doesn't get off of my cord, there we go. <laughs> he about stripped me there. So Chad Weber walks in with eight minutes and 31 seconds. Dalrymple will attempt the extra point. 20 to nothing so far. And it's blocked. Tim Burrows again, Lance, came through and blocked that punt. Unbelievable. Tell you what, the kid's done everything tonight. He, uh, you know, he's, he's returning kicks, carrying the ball, and, and making what? Half of their tackles, I uh, wouldn't, I at wouldn't, least. Uh, <laughs> I wouldn't be afraid to say. He's made half the tackles. He's everywhere, but we do have a score of 20 to nothing, and we'll take a short break, and we'll be back with the kickoff. Masters Garage features a full line of Quaker State products, such as Quaker State oil, fillers of all kinds, lube products, and parts to keep your vehicle in top running condition. They feature a 24-hour record service honoring Amico, Montgomery Ward, and Cross Country. They specialize in custom exhaust work with the Ben Pearson Muffler Shop, as well as custom brake installation and lube jobs. Masters Garage and Quaker State oil. One tough motor oil. So Dyer Rimple. We'll give this back, give the ball back to the Cougars with 20 to nothing, 8 minutes and 31 seconds. An impressive drive. Seven plays. A short line drive kick picked up by Barrows. Has trouble with it back on the 10 yard line. He's in big trouble. Late flag thrown on that, and that's got to go against Woodsfield. Uh, wasn't anybody from Frontier there to do anything, so probably a face mask. It is. And it's against the Redskins. So the Cougars get a break there. That kick coming, pretty much a line drive shot. Barrows picking it up, couldn't find the handle. And then was swarmed, but then the penalty is going to put this ball up in pretty decent position for them. It looks like on the 32-yard line, where they'll take over with their first possession in this series. 
Cam West will come to this side as Bobby Oliver will snap the ball to Hurst, left-handed quarterback for the Cougars. He faked to the up back looking and dropped the ball up here to number 10, Brad Berger for a short game. Berger did a real nice job of reaching down and, and scooping that ball up for it's only about a one yard gain, but a real nice catch. Yeah, he didn't get a big gain on him, but he did a nice job digging it out. They marked it second and eight. Ball on the 34 yard line. Pryor back into the ball game, who was injured right before the half. It's good to see him back. Burrows back across the middle and a gain of a few yards. Guy Rimple with the stop. It's going to be third and four. Third and four, ball on the 38 yard line. Cam West wide to the far side. Power eye. They fake and give the ball to Justin Amos. As Jeremy Kramer takes him down. Kramer on the stop, and we do have an injured player. And we'll take a break here with an injury to a Cougar player on the playing field. Injury timeout. Uh, Justin Amos, the injured ball player, was taken off with the E squad. He was walking under his own power, so be interested to see what happens. It's always a shame in high school athletics. And we have a fake as the ball is loose. And Frontier had a, a go play on. They're trying to get the ball to the up back. And so we're going to take over on downs here, I believe, Lance. Looks like the ball's on the 40-yard line, 35-yard line. 35-yard line, great field position. Uh, Chris Dyer will come up with the fumble there. I'm going to talk real quiet for the rest of the game here, Dale. <laughs> <laughs> I want anybody to know I'm up here. They are, they are really fired yes. up over here on the Frontier side. Not very happy at the referees. And, uh, no, and it, you know, emotions get high when you have an injury like that, and it's always a shame. Yeah, it could have been a face it mask. It could have been. Yeah, I couldn't really tell. Chad Weber, and he's stopped there by number 44, Egger, Jason Egger. Egger, 6'4", 215. Barrows there, also helping on the stop. For a pickup of possibly one. Second and nine. Five minutes and 35 seconds as they break huddle. Larry Nelson will be wide out to the right. Another wishbone formation with Rick Russell to take the snap. Fakes, gives the ball to Nelson. Right in the middle of that seam and he's down close to the 25, 26, 27 yard line. Anybody, those up, I yeah. <laughs> Anybody wonders what kind of arm Rick Russell has. I think he showed it right there. He, he put that ball uh, right on the numbers and it popped when it hit Larry. A real nice pass. So after the good pass completion, they marked the third and three. Taking the ball's loose, it's kicked forward. And I believe we've covered the ball. Looks like Chris Lynn may have fallen on. Still fighting in the middle of the pile, but I believe we came back up with it. I think Shoemaker was able to run in there and dive on the ball. It was a draw play, just hit him on the knee and bounced, rolled out of there. Shoemaker was on the stop, running in and getting the ball. Looks like he might be dazed after the play. Come on, 
Scott Wilson, number 82, reporting into the ball game. And Dustin Robinson to this side. Shane Dunn's in at fullback. Shane Dunn, there. yes, replacing Luke Shoemaker. The ball goes to Shane. Shane, a nice run. Picking up valuable yardage across in the first down. Well, Shane's been wanting to get that ball in his hands and did a real nice job right there of putting the ball right down their throats on a fourth and three. Uh, you know, Woodsfield just went with power football. Wing left, power left. Uh, and that was a place for it. Three minutes and 50 seconds. As again, we're down in uh, corner territory, Perry. <laughs> Russell fakes, gives the ball back. Chris Lynn with the ball, picks up good yardage. Nice job to Chris Lynn there, breaking it to the outside. Uh, saw there wasn't any room there where, you know, off tackle, bounced it to the outside and picked up nice yardage. He shows good speed when he bounces the outside. He and, and Dustin Robinson both have that ability to, dust, you know, bounce it outside, pick up those yardage when they need it. They're going to measure. It looks like he picked up right at 10 yards. So. Well, I can't see this one good enough to put a bet on it, Lance. I don't know. We'll leave this one up to you. I'd have to say we got this one. They didn't. <laughs> not quite as close as the <laughs> other ones. As they measure. And first down. First down, okay. <laughs> now everybody thinks that's funny, but I can't see it. <laughs> well, I lied, I can't hear it. Pull is right in front of where that ball is. I'm afraid to hang too far out of this press box. They might see his red jacket and start hanging yeah, me. Or right out. It's a bad time of year for that kind of stuff. So I'm just gonna stand back here and uh, Call it from the back row. Larry Nelson wide out to the right. Ricky Russell take the snap. Fakes. Gives it to Lynn. Dustin Robinson. Dustin Robinson. And Dustin Robinson got the flow going to one side. Bottled back across the seam. Into the end zone. They had, him bottled in. Up. they had him bottled up for about a four or five yard loss. And just a, once he got by that one particular containment, it was clear sailing. So it's a 26 to nothing ball game. Three minutes and seven seconds remaining in the third quarter. And we'll see what Coach does here. The last one, if you remember, was blocked down in this area. So we'll see whether he chooses to go with a kick or a fake. It is up. And the official says it's good. So it's a 27 to nothing ball game. At three minutes and seven seconds remaining in the third quarter, we'll take a break and we'll be right back. So you stay with us. Let Swiss Lands Realty help you find what you need in a home, commercial property, or open land. How about a ranch style home with a view? Or this ranch located close to State Route 78? Here's a basement home for you to finish as you wish. Ah, this one is a fisherman's dream. A cottage a little more than a stone's throw from Sunfish Creek in the Ohio River. If complete seclusion sounds good to you, you'll love this 41 acres waiting for you with a camper and barn. Adjoining Wayne National Forest, you can ride four-wheelers or horses in the trails, sit by a peaceful creek, or fish in the pond. This barn in an old log house is located on several wooded acres with some tillable ground for farming. Secluded yet close to town, this ranch-style home comes complete with appliances and furnishings, with a beautiful creek and woods to enjoy nature's best. Call Swiss Lands Realty today if you're looking for property or have property to sell. That's Swiss Lands Realty, 472-0614. Back is Dalrymple. Will kick the ball deep. Bears and Berga. I'm sorry, Justin Amos. Oh, that's not right. <laughs> Hurst with the ball. Hurst got nowhere to go. He's got some blocking, bringing it back, and he's down the 30-yard line. Hurst. 
Percy scrambled around, did a lot of running, but really didn't go forward too far. <laughs> he turned that kick off like a quarterback should. That's right. <laughs> I'm sure uh, Coach Elder from the Frontier is just telling him to get down on it after a while because he, uh, he stepped by with a lot of traffic coming by. My boy Harley Pyatt's in at nose guard this time, so I'm going to key on him. Joe Crest back at safety position. Dustin Robinson on this side. We've got several. Uh, Harley Pye with the tackle. <laughs> <laughs> J.R. Young also into the ball game. On this side of the line. Pick up the four, second and six. Two minutes to go in this quarter as the umbrellas come back out as the rain intensifies. 27 to nothing in favor of the Redskins. I'm sure coming in, no one thought it'd be this easy. Burroughs runs into his own player and drives forward as he will not be denied. Jason Pyatt, unfortunately, on the, yeah. <laughs> the end of that, <laughs> he got himself in a bad situation there. But yeah, the frontier, a, yeah, earlier in the game, our, our first string's in there, and they're pushing us back. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, this, uh, they can run the ball. They've showed us that earlier, and, and I think we're fortunate that, you know, they didn't get more of an attack going earlier. First with Cam West to this side. He's covered by Chris Lynn. Handoff goes to Burroughs. Burroughs with Pyatt, Calder, and looked like lost the other number. West on the stop. But he has enough for the first down, so it's going to be first and 10, one minute and 19 seconds to go. Okay, Perry's going to get into the trenches this time, right down where the blocking occurs. Give everybody a chance to see exactly what goes on. The surge of the line is very important, is it not, Lance? Well, it's, it's that's exactly it, and that, that's been the key to the ball game tonight as far as our offense goes. That's right. It's just one against the other. Everybody hitting and first back. He's got a lot of pressure. And Dyrimple, I believe, puts him down, and we've got flags. One referee's just made an obvious uh, call as far as the intentional grounding. The other referee threw the flag right at the quarterback. So, yeah, you know, both referees called it. Uh, sure, the fans aren't going to agree with it, but two referees did. And, uh, yes. Hurst in a lot of trouble dropping the ball off, trying to get rid of it as Dyrimple takes him down with, with authority. That's a loss of down, too, so a big play there by the Woodsfield defense. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be second down and half a mile. Yes. <laughs> we uh, won't win the trenches again. <laughs> you didn't like that, huh, Perry? I, <laughs> I missed everything. <laughs> it's hard to do. It's hard to get right in the trenches and then come out. We do sure, all the fans are going to appreciate that tomorrow. They, <laughs> yes. they missed the biggest play of the game because Perry was in the trenches. <laughs> and Lance had to point it out. <laughs> That's, That's why Perry we love it. <laughs> B-A-R-A. <laughs> he can be reached at 4 7 to oh, Barrows with a handoff almost breaking it loose. J.R. Young on the stop. I thought Barrow was going to sidestep and come back across and get some yardies, but JR doing a good job wrapping him and plugging a hole up. You just said exactly what I was going to say there. Uh, well, see? You know, <laughs> third and long, or second and real long, looking for the pass, uh, try the draw. Um, Woodsfield's starting to get a little bit of a pass rush, so you, do you want to hang your quarterback out again? Hurst looking, looking. He's in trouble again. Tries to drop the ball off to Edgar, number 44 on the other side. Jason Edgar, it's not as if he's not big enough, 6'4", just overthrew it, but he had a lot of pressure. 
Hager was wide open in the flat. Doubt that he could have picked up first down yardage, but so it's going to be fourth and 26 if the board's correct. And there's one second to go in this third quarter. As Berger drops, Russell and Lynn back on the 40-yard line. And the kick is a deep one. Wow, alive. The ball taking a roll, and it's down to the 12-yard line. From the 28 to the 12, so... Uh, 32 and 38, 70-yard punt right there. Ain't that amazing? Tremendous job as Berger knocks it back 70 yards. And that's the end of the quarter. And we'll come back with the last 12 minutes of action with the Redskins taking over on the 12-yard line. So you stay with us. 23 and 38. Hey, Joe, how's business? Profits are up. Employees are doing great now. If I could just do something about these stupid phone bills. Telemarketing is our biggest expense. You haven't heard about TMC? They guarantee 20% savings on your long distance calls. Sure they do. Wait a minute, I use their service and so does Swiss Lands Realty. Just ask them. For a personal comparison of savings on your phone bill, business or residential, call Tim Henson at 1-800-669-0001. Save with TMC. Skin Cougar Ball Game is brought to you by Demchex BP, Jackson's Newsstand, Days TV, TMC Telemarketing, FW Shoemaker, Swissland Realty, Katie's Place, and Weber's Pharmacy. John and Steve of Weber's Pharmacy care about you and your family. Over the years, they've served our community with after hours, emergency service, competitive prices, quality products, friendly staff, and that special hometown touch. With this Spirit of hometown pride, John and Steve wish Coach Sacosta and the mighty Whitsfield Redskins another successful football season this 1992 school year. Remember Weber's Pharmacy for all your health needs. You're not just a number with Weber's, you're part of the family. And the ball goes straight up the middle. Chad Weber with the ball. Ball popped loose, but they blew it dead. Jamie Vusick on the stop after a gain of nine, second and one. Big chance here for Woodsfield to run some of the time off the clock. Uh, a lot of time, well, 11 and a half minutes to go. Uh, Frontier thinks had the ball twice so far the second half now. Yes. So five possessions in the whole ball game going into the fourth quarter. We can't complain about that. Dustin Robinson again oh, with the ball to this yeah, side. Pretty flagrant, uh, Carl. I, you know, we're over here on front two yeah. side and hearing them booing, and uh, there goes another flag for an unsportsman. There's another so one. Looks like about a 30-yard pickup here for Woodsfield. I'm sure frustration, you know, taking over with the the frontier ball players, but there's never an excuse or never a time for that. Two flags have been thrown. We'll see what these all is when we sort it out as the officials are conferring. There goes 15. 25. That brings the ball across midfield down to the 48-yard line. It's just a big mental mistake here and, and another, uh, you know, I'll, I'll be honest with you, same as the Waterford game, I blame it on the coaching staff. You know, yeah, you can't have that. that uh, you know, they, they didn't pull anybody out of Frontier's defense. Uh, you know, the late hit, you know, possibly, possibly, possibly can put up with that once a, once a season or something. But for the mouth and off, they've had two 15-yarders for that tonight, and it, it uncalled for. And the first one hurt them badly. Exactly. The first one hurt them really badly. You hate to see that. Dustin Robinson busted to the outside. 
as he continues hard running down about the 43 yard line, a pickup of five plus yardage. Dustin impresses me more and more every week. Dustin yeah. just constantly, uh, you know, his running style, he he doesn't go down on that first hit, and he bounces it outside nice. And he's hard to, he's hard to wrap. Seems like, you know, they can't get him wrapped. Exactly. And, and again, you got to give credit to the, the line there somewhat because you've got a 120-pounder, and you're letting him run through there. He's not doing it on his own. No, no, that's for sure. Ball back to Weber. Weber busted around this side. And he's down. He's got first down. And we got another flag. I'm gonna call a late hit there, a spear or something of the sort. Weber, he was on the ground and he calling it a spear. Yeah. A lot of discussion among the players themselves from Frontier. As they're totally self-destructing here. Not a good situation for either team or anyone involved. Started this drive out on the 12-yard line after that beautiful punt. And, uh, you know, we're at the 19-yard line of Frontier now. Done 45 of it's been on penalties. So yes. That's the, the, the kids in the red and white out here showing a lot of composure because they're getting some shots thrown at them and uh, no one's retaliating. That's coaching, I'll tell you. Yeah. It says a lot for the kids. Russell drops it in. Shane. And I believe it was just a little bit out of his reach. Again, that same that same pattern. Larry Nelson deep at, at the end zone, drawing a lot of attention, yeah. getting Shane Dunn in the middle, and just couldn't connect on that pass. Right Larry, idea. Larry, Larry made, ran a nice pattern there. Ran the man off to the inside and broke to the corner. Uh, had, you know, had, chat, or had Rick not thrown the ball to Larry, or Shane right there. Larry was going to get a step there in about a second. Yeah. But it was a well-executed play. Just didn't make connections. Nine minutes and 50 seconds, 51 seconds. It'll be second and 10. Ball just inside the 20-yard line. Again, dropping. He drops it off to Weber. And Weber is going to go right to the end line. And we have another score. Beautiful play right there. Rick Russell did a nice job. He'd let go of the ball before uh, Chad even had a chance to turn around. Nice execution. So we put six more on with nine minutes and 43 seconds remaining in the ball game. I would say anyone's question about how the Redskins would bounce back after their loss against Barnesville last week has to be put to rest. Exactly. We've, we've bounced back twice this year now. Seven and two after tonight, hopefully. Or, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick my neck out and say uh, 9.43 <laughs> to go. I'm going to say seven and two. Uh, I don't know how many people expected Woodsfield to come out like this, but uh, a few breaks and Woodsfield's nine and zero and back to back yes. playoff teams, so, which uh, isn't out of the question yet. You know, we, we need some breaks from we other control people. Our, we, we don't really control our own destiny. We uh, all we can do is win and hope, and uh, and uh, stranger things have happened. Yeah, that's for sure. We're going to take a short break here, and we'll be back with the last nine minutes and 43 seconds. Back deep for the Cougars is Fusick and Burrows. And the punt is short coming off of Hurst arm. Fusick will pick it up on the far side. He brings it across the middle. And he's tackled by, looks like Powell, I believe, on the stop. J.J. Roja, I believe, was on the stop. And they're going to have the ball first and 10. 25-yard line, 26-yard line. A lot of white jerseys in the game for Woodsfield right now. Uh, and, yes. and as you look out, for, or Frontier still got all their first stringers in. Uh, yeah, this, this isn't going to be any indication of how things are going to be in the future. Uh, Frontier moves the ball here. You can't blame the kids in here right now. Yeah, that, that's right. Because we got a lot of new guys. Chad Yoho here, number 76. J.R. Young. 
Tom Hyatt, I believe, on the stomp, along with Dustin Robinson. J.R. Young in on the stomp also. It's Paul Shark, Shark J.R. Young. Paul Shark? Paul Shark, J.R. Young, yeah. He'll know what I mean by that. <laughs> It's great to see the young kids in the ball game getting a chance. 73 in Grant and Nichols on the line. Hurst looking, looking, and it's out of bounds. Hurst threw a pretty fast, just out of bounds, a uh, step or two, but a awful tight spiral and he had the right distance just wasn't quite it's hard to get used to that left hand throwing isn't it yeah it is it's, it's kind of different here stabler, stabler. <laughs> the snake yeah <laughs> They're in a tight eye formation, the slot to the right, and the ball goes to Tim Bears. And the surge of the line brings him up to the 45-yard line. <laughs> 71, J.R. Young on the stop, and Dustin Robinson. <laughs> First down with the ball just short of the 45 at the 44 yard line. Eight minutes and 10 seconds remaining in the ball game. Cam West, wide out to the right. Power eye, fake handoff, Busick with the ball. Comes around this side and Dustin Robinson. I'm sorry, Taylor is a ball carrier. And Dustin Robinson stomps him right at the 50 yard line after a short gain. Second and five. Seven minutes, 30 seconds remaining. A lot of pressure, Nichols. Dropped off to Cam West, Cam, and he's out of bounds for a first down. I believe that's West's first catch tonight, if I, uh, if I, I don't remember. I don't remember having right. one before. And uh, that was a, a big concern. That was one of the keys, the wasn't it? He's one of, his coach said on the highlights show Thursday evening, uh, he's a game breaker and, and yeah. uh, one of the leading receivers in the Valley. Uh, even went as far as to say he's one of the, the best receivers in the Valley he's seen. So. And he's nice really job been by the defensive backs balling him up tonight. Got to credit the defensive line with some pass rush, too. Yeah, there's a lot of pressure on that one. As Hurst dropped the ball off to him, and he made some yardage out of really nothing. Ball to Barrows. Barrows across this side. Dimmerling and Shoemaker. Along with Wilson on the stop as Barrows picks up, looks like six yards, second and four. He's a hard runner, there's no doubt about that. Second and four, six minutes and 25 seconds remaining in the ball game. Slot to the right, faking, Barrows with the ball to this side. He breaks it back across. Dustin Robinson along with Wilson and Luke Shoemaker. Cougars pick up another first down as they're marching down the field. Just over six minutes remaining. Hurst on an option play, breaks it back to the middle. First picks up good yard, he's breaking back across. He's tackled by Luke Shoemaker and J.R. Young. 
Frontier moving the ball pretty well right now. Uh, you know, I I may be wrong in my thinking, but uh, you know, what, what's the sense of yeah. leaving? You know, your first string in there. You've got 20 kids standing over here on the sideline, five minutes to go. Uh, when are they going to get their game experience? Yeah, the game basically over. 34 to nothing. Bad burger of the ball carrier. Okay. Because <laughs> I'm not sure if I got in front of Perry on that or not. But yeah. Hurst took quite a hit there from Jonathan Calder in the backfield. Now, that's about three times on this drive that he's taken a big hit. And that, you know, that's just another reason why, you know, to, uh, to get him out for another why, game. Why leave him in there and, uh, and take a chance to get him hurt? 34 and in the game, you know, for all purposes is over. So, uh, Get your young kids in and give them a shot. We're doing some shifting here to get someplace where we can see. First, we'll take this with five minutes and 14 seconds. The eye formation bears, and he stopped Jonathan Calder. They had a draw play, and Carter was not fooled, pulling him down. They're giving him a yard. Second and nine. Number 63 into the ball game, Benji Monahan in the middle of the line. Yes. <laughs> Perry wouldn't give me my sheet. I had no idea what I'm looking at. Dropped it off over the middle. Edgar it looked like in and out of his hands. A little hesitation on the referees' part there. <laughs> Working with four referees tonight, and I haven't seen one in the, the middle of the defensive backfield, you know, down the field very that, far. So, yeah, I, I thought that was a neat. I hope we got that on the set with uh, Edgar, the biggest player on the field, and uh, Dustin Robinson defending it. Probably the smallest player <laughs> yeah. on the field. Yeah, <laughs> Dustin coming in at a, a whopping 5'3. Edgar upwards of 6'4, six, 6'5. Option play doesn't develop, and a whole slew of white jerseys taking Hurst down. Matt Nelson Longwell in on the stop there. <laughs> Another inside like, uh, <laughs> I'm sure he'll get a chuckle out of. I believe Ben Klein was also on it, number 51. I believe I saw that number. Hard to see from that distance. But a swarming defense as Hurst had nowhere to go. And they're going to take some time out here. Three minutes and 50 seconds remaining. With time out on the field, we'll take a time out to hear from some of our fine folks who make these games possible. So we're at 351. Frontier taking a time out. They're down close to the end zone. It's already a 34 to nothing ball game. First, drop the ball back to Berger. Looks like a half uh, halfback pass. The ball's up in the air. And Luke Shoemaker come down with it, and it's incomplete. So we'll take over on downs on the 20. Man, I don't know where we're at there, Lance. Can you tell? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say about uh, 10, 15, 13 yards. Okay, looks 13, like yeah. I love those movable markers. You know, everybody picks them up and moves them so they can stand. And, right. and you have no idea. Yeah, they've been going since early in the first quarter. <laughs> Joe Cress, new quarterback. Straight up the middle. Crest with a very short pickup. Like just a straight quarterback sneak uh, to probably Run just some to time. get him comfortable with the quarterback, you know, center quarterback exchange. 
just over three minutes. Second and eight. A lot of white jerseys into the ball game. Cress. Handoff. Mark Demmerling. Demmerling. And Demmerling gets really nothing up that middle. Defense swarming. Demmerling. Third and seven after they gave him one on that. Third and seven. I want to just take a second here and uh, plead with some people to get out, you know, get out there Monday night. Uh, Woodsfield Place Frontier and Reserve Ball game. Uh, you know, these guys are in here right now. These are the guys that are playing Monday evening. They're not gonna, you know, they're they're not moving the ball a lot right now. And and a person would think, well, these guys, you know, why well, go out and watch for Monday night? I believe the record's seven and one, and. Uh, Put them out there against a bunch of kids that are in age, and, and, and we've level. got some up-and-coming ball players. 5:30 Monday nights when the, when they'll play, uh, they'll be hosting Frontier up at you know, Redskins Stadium. Redskin. Now it seems like the junior high team didn't they just finish the season with a impressive record? Yeah, I uh, I refereed three football games out there right? this year, and uh, I'll tell you what, they have some talent. We'll be harping on the freshmen again next year. Good kick. 35 yard line. A tremendous That's quite a kick. kick uh, that was a good one. About 18 yard line. 47 <laughs> yard punt. We didn't see. I had my calculator out there. Right? 47 <laughs> yard punt. That's, that's two work, straight huh? long punts. One to the frontier and one to the um, Chad West. Now this is going to put them back. There's only a minute and 28 seconds to go in this ball game. And they're going to start with the ball on the 35 yard line. With the clock running. West, Berger, and Hurst coming in. And they'll break huddle. They're going to be going downtown here. Uh, yeah, you know the coach was telling the quarterback and both receivers they didn't even go into the huddle. The the two receivers. So. Yeah, well, just over a minute. Wrong. They've got to do something. Thrown out of bounds. Cam West in the general neighborhood. Dropped by Mike Dimmerling over there. <laughs> Knew he'd get his name in there tonight somewhere. <laughs> Fifty-seven seconds with the incomplete pass. Second and ten. White jerseys all over the playing field defensively for the Redskins. And you young fellows, you know, we can't read all your numbers, but we do appreciate you. We know you're doing a great job as Wilson <laughs> almost picked that one off. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, it, that ball would have been a second later getting there. Scotty Wilson was going for six because uh, he almost caught it the way it was and just sort of caught him by surprise. Yes, coming over to defend and it just kind of appeared and couldn't come up with it. But it'll be third and ten, 53 seconds. With the score of 34 to nothing, this ball game is basically over. Redskins will take their seven and two record into next week's ball game uh, at Bellsville, and it should be tremendous. Hurley, Hyatt busting through the line. Crowd starting here. Hurley, Hurley. <laughs> That's got to pump a young man up. Tell you what, he's a good kid. <laughs> Even with what he did to my car the other night for Halloween. Uh, <laughs> Can you say that on the air? Well, I'm not going to say <laughs> okay. it. Anyway. He cleaned it <laughs> off. So okay. we'll, uh, <laughs> we'll not get him in any more trouble than he was Monday night. <laughs> Your dad is listening, Harley. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fourth and 20. 22 seconds. Burger. 
Kress and Lynn. Deep as Berga. And it'll take a bounce back to the 34-35 yard line. And another penalty. That was 66. 66 came ramming in. Chris Lynn and uh, really the yeah, 66 drew the flag for it. Chris Lynn got up, walked off. Uh, yeah, that, to me, shaking his head, wondering. Yeah, yeah, he's well. Yeah, he's he's the bigger man. That's right. That's all there is to it. I know you, you get down when when things are yes, going bad, do. but uh, you can't can't allow that type. Of, I mean, See, you can't let yourself. That's resort. what high school athletics all about. That's it's it. Supposed to make young men and uh, you know fine gentlemen, and uh, it's a shame, you know, and you feel bad. I know the the Cougars, you know, feel bad about tonight, and they definitely felt this was a ball game that they could win and they felt coming in you know maybe even a little bit favored but right. uh, you know it just didn't turn around that way and it's a shame but it's a shame that they let their emotions get the best of them I believe that's going to be the last play of the game they're going to let the clock run out so seven and two So that is the end of this ball game. It ends on a 34 to nothing note. And Lance, just to kind of wrap up here, you know, it wasn't, you know, we, we controlled the ball pretty much time-wise and, and did what we wanted to do, you know. The Cougars had their chances. They, they kind of blew them, you know, shot themselves in the foot, you know. Um, they showed some good speed, some good running, but it just never developed for them. Well, they did. They, they have some talent. And, uh, you know, obviously they have some talent. They've won six ball games this year. Uh, gave Caldwell a ball game, and I, and I think they came in thinking that they were going to, you know, I think they come in thinking they could really knock us off, and, and they could have. But uh, Woodsville come out early again, uh, just the way we, we talk week after week. They come out early, got a couple quick touchdowns, and, uh, yeah, you, you get somebody down the, the way they did. And, uh, it makes a big difference in, in sure the outcome. Does. Yeah, you know, and, and you, you get them down, and and sometimes you just can't come back from that. It is a shame. You know, we're, we're very pleased with the win, the 34 to nothing win uh, for the Redskins, and I know they'll be pumped up for next week, and that will be a big one. Everybody want to, you know, set their VCRs and make it over to Bellsville and watch that one. Exactly. Plus uh, Monday night. Yeah, okay, <laughs> plus Monday night. We don't want to forget that. Well, this is Dale Eddy for Lance LaFont and Perry Bronich from Frontier High School. We have good news, a 30 to 4 to nothing victory for the Redskins, and we'll see you next week at Bellsville High School for the Monroe County Super Bowl. We'll see you next week.